Hi, Stephen here. Perspective can be tricky enough even with basic square shapes, but architecture often has arches and circles and other rounded shapes incorporated into it. And these can be perhaps scarier or more intimidating when we go to draw to incorporate the proper perspective. So this video is going to look at exactly how that works. And we're going to start by looking at at um, circles and arches and rounded shapes that when we're basically seeing them front on. Okay, so let's get right into it because there's a lot to look at. When we think about perspective, the easiest way to think about it is in terms of square shapes. Here's a roughly square shape. And we put a horizon in and we have a vanishing point on that horizon, on that eye level. And then we can we can put a nice big square window in our square wall. And if we have a side wall that slopes away with a certain perspective because of where we're standing looking at it, then we're able to put that window nice and accurately into that side wall. Now that's all very nice and straightforward for boxes, but what happens if our window is an arch shape? How do we manage this circular part of the window in that perspective? That's what we're going to look at next. I find it easiest to visualize shapes in terms of circles or squares when it comes to drawing in perspective. The good thing about a circle is that it actually fits in a square. And it's easier to visualize the square in perspective. So my approach is when I'm drawing a, an arch or a circular window or a rose window in, in perspective is I try and see the square, divide the square up and you know, depending on how many parts of the segments of the circle I'm drawing, to visualize how they look in the distorted square. So let's see what that looks like. So here we have another building uh, drawn in perspective and we have a rectangular window here, but on this window, we want to add an arch. So how do we draw this arch properly in perspective? Well, I think the simplest thing is to visualize it ourselves as a half a square. There's the other half of the square here. The, the arch would, if it was the full circle, but we're just concerned with this. And so I've drawn um, this in perspective. Now I need to allow for foreshortening, which means that this width will be narrower than this, this width. And I need to now, in my mind, I'm, I'm visualizing this box. So this is the part which, I mean, you can draw it if you want, but this is the part I usually visualize in my head. And now I've got to draw this there, and I draw this here. And a couple of important things to note. One is, is that one half of the arch finishes lower than the other. The further away end of the arch finishes lower than the closer end of the arch. The other thing to notice is that these two arcs aren't the same length. Again, one of them will be longer or shorter than the other. And it can be quite considerable if it's an extreme angle of pers perspective. But by visualizing the arch as a circle within a square, I can either draw the, the guidelines I need to draw it accurately, or I can just visualize them in my head as well. Not so difficult, is it? Let's consider another architectural situation. Let's say we are looking up A tall wall, a very tall wall, and there is a circular window 
up the top. Perhaps it's a it's a Gothic uh, cathedral and it's a big rose window. So let's draw our square in. And we'll allow for the fact that because it starts quite some way up, uh, it's, it's uh, and we have to allow for foreshortening so that the further distance is compressed compared to the closer distance, but we will still put our four, four sides in. Okay, and so now with the, uh, with the top half of the circle, it's just like the arch. And we draw in a bit of a wobbly, bit of a wobbly circle. My um, square lines aren't exactly in the right place, but that, in essence, is the way is the way we get we get the circle done. We draw the we draw the square surrounds in place. We divide it into four. We we get that correct in terms of the perspective and the scale, and then we in each in each quadrant we draw the curve. And again, you can see how very different the curves are in two of the quadrants. So uh, these shapes, which are called ellipses, end up being symmetrical on, on one of the axes. So on this vertical axis, these are the same. So this will be the same as that, and this will be the same as that. And again, that's, that's good to know because when I draw, I need to make sure they are if I want it to look correct. And the other thing to realize is how very different this line is compared to this line in its length and in the amount of curve. This line has so much more curve in it than this one. And that's an important thing to also capture in our drawings. So this is how I would handle a large round window in a wall, allowing for perspective. And of course, if the window were going sideways, we would simply be drawing it in this way. Okay. Secondly now, we're going to look at how perspective affects rounded shapes when we look at these shapes more edge on rather than, than flat on. When these things are more horizontal, shapes are more horizontal to us rather than vertical to us. So let's get right into it. Here we have a quick drawing of a column. And as we know, the column is a, a long cylinder in effect. And often architecturally, it's structurally, it's made of segments placed one on top of the other. Often the column uh, slowly decreases in size as, as it gets higher. Now with this column, we're standing not down at ground level, we're standing maybe on a, in a building opposite, and we're kind of looking at the halfway point of this column. And I want to look at what happens with these divisions of the different drums that have been stacked together to make the column of these, these cylindrical segments. Because what happens with perspective, as the perspective goes up or goes down, the angles of the curves increase. The degree of curvature increases the further away we get from the eye level. Here's the eye level here. And it works in both directions. The further up we look, the higher our edge on circles go, the more rounded they become. And exactly the same thing in the other direction. So we have a straight line at eye level. And then the lines become increasingly curved if they're showing a rounded surface. We probably don't often draw the segments of columns, but another situation where we do see this perspective aspect of, of edge on circles at work is when we have a building with a, a tall round tower with, with a dome on the top, and we have segments that get smaller and smaller, stacked one on top of each other. So this is the French Cathedral in Berlin. And we can see that we have just that. We have a series of round shapes that are stacked on top of each other with a, a not quite circular dome on top. And when we look at this, we can see that if we compare the lowest curve that we can see, which is this 
this line here and the highest one that we can clearly see, which is this one up here, this one has a, a greater fullness to the curve than this one does. And if we could imagine that this drum went down through the building, what would happen is that this curve would become flatter and flatter and flatter until if it got to eye level, it would be horizontal. So these side on curves, these edges to circles at eye level are just a straight line. And then as we go up and as we go down, whether it's in a, a single column or whether it's in an entire building, as they move up away from the eye level, the curves become rounder and rounder, fuller and fuller. And it's not just the curves of, of the actual stack shapes, but also lines such as the lines of where windows align. They follow the same curve, gradually getting fuller and fuller in line with the shapes that they sit on. And so again, if we know what to expect, it's easier to observe. And then there's more chance that we're going to incorporate it accurately in our drawing. We'll look at an example from real life that brings everything together. And this is a colonnade in Vienna. And we can see that we have a series of arches join, joining two walls of columns. And then there are arches joining the two sides with a ceiling on the top. And the first thing I want to look at are these arches down the side. And I want to think back to that first example we gave of the arched windows on the side of a building. And we talked about trying to imagine the square that the circle of the arch fits within. And I've drawn half a square here according to the perspective of this view. And you can see it's a very extreme angle, very extreme perspective. And we can see though that, that, that the circle of the arch fits very nicely and very exactly in it. And a couple of observations. One is that we can see that this half of the arch is a very different shape to the other half of the arch. This arch is, this, this curve is, is very shallow. This curve is almost a half circle to look at. This also shows us if we, if we look at our square that we've drawn or half square and we put the halfway point of the arch on it, we can actually see that it's not halfway along between these two spots. There's actually 40 millimetres here and there's only about 26 millimetres there. So again, we have an example here of foreshortening that the further away the perspective goes and, and, and an object moves, the more visually it's compressed. And so that's a, and that happens more so when the angle is greater that it's moving away from us from. So, so we see that happening here. So, so the, the, the perspective and particularly the foreshortening really affects the way that that circle is drawn. If we look now at these arches that link the two sides, we can see that the furthest arch is, is quite rounded. But as the arches get closer to us and more overhead, they become more shallow. And we can imagine if we could see the, the arch directly above us, it would probably be horizontal. And again, seeing that pattern accurately before we start to draw it will help us to draw it more accurately. However, the opposite is true with these round circular shapes in the ceiling. If we were to look directly above us, that would probably be pretty much a circle. But these shapes, as they move further away from us, they become more elongated. The circle becomes an ellipse and the ellipses become more and more elongated. And if this colonnade went a few, a few uh, sections further, then these ellipses would become narrower and narrower as they went back. It's really helpful to see these patterns when we draw, the, the way the perspective affects the repeated architectural elements of the building. Because if we see them first, that will help us to, to, to draw them more accurately. If we see the extreme, if we see the most curved and the least curved, then we know that we have to spread that curve in between however many elements there are. It doesn't matter what, you know, whether we're talking about foreshortening or curvature or anything. So, so learning to spot the patterns is really important. Okay, this is how I think about rounded shapes and dealing with them in perspective. It's how my thinking goes 
and therefore it, it's what informs my drawing. It's certainly helpful for me. I hope it's been helpful for you. If it has, please hit like, please subscribe if you haven't. If you know someone who draws who you think would benefit from, from this video and others, then please share, share it with them. And if you've got any comments, please leave them below. Maybe you have your own perspective experience stories you could share with me and, and with others. And in the meantime, bye.